it, Stacey. Thank you so much for joining me. Today I'm going to show you how to make this really cute ribbon star block quilt. And what it is, is nine ribbon star blocks that we then sew together to make up our quilt top. I'll then attach some borders and we make this really super cute quilt. We do get a secondary pattern because of the clever fabric placement. You can find the instructions in the description below. So let's get making our ribbon star quilt. So to make our quilt, we're going to make nine ribbon star blocks like this one here. Obviously your fabric will be different and basically it's just made up of half square triangles. Every single piece here is a half square triangle except for the outer corners, which is simply just squares. You're going to need seven different fabrics and then we're going to place them in the same order for every single block, which will create this pattern and it will also create a secondary pattern when they're all next to each other because these triangles here will become squares when the second piece is placed down here and to the sides and so on. So I've got a legend here and it's quite simple really. All we need to know is what fabric we want to use on the outer corners to start with and we'll be cutting 36 at three and a half inches by three and a half inches. And then for all the rest of the fabrics, we'll cut two pieces 12 inches by 12 inches for all the remaining six fabrics. So once we've cut all our fabric, now we need to marry up each of the 12 inch by 12 inch pieces with their correct partner. And now I've got a legend down here for that. And you can see that we need one set of the B and the F fabric. Now, this might be getting a little bit tricky for you to remember which one you wanted to be B and C and D and E and so on. So I've come up with this little guide here that may help you. It helped me. What I did was I just worked out what fabric I wanted where, cut out a little tiny piece of scrap and just glued it on just to help me make sure I am using the correct pieces of fabric for the correct positions. And I also thought it would be quite a nice little thing to keep as a reference for a quilt that I've made. You don't have to do this if you can remember which fabrics you want to use or you might want to just cut out the letters and pin them onto the fabrics to help you remember. Just do whatever's going to help you work it out the easiest way possible and you can find a copy of this over on my website. So if we look at the guide, we need to match up one of B and F, one of B and C, one of D and C, one of D and F and two of E and G. So I'm just going to do the first set of E and G. So if I look on my guide here, E is this fabric here and G is this fabric here. So all I'll do is grab those two fabrics and I'm just going to put them together as a pair and set them aside and then pair up all my other fabrics. So I've got all these matching pairs together. So we're going to do this step for each of our six pairs of fabric. And I've got my first pair here that I just showed you. I'm just going to pop one piece aside, take one piece, turn it so it's wrong side facing me. And then what I'm going to do is rule four inch lines across it. So I'm going to line up my ruler on the edge of my fabric. So I've got four inches. So if I line up the line on my ruler on the edge of my fabric I can count one two three four and that's correct I'll draw a line and then I'm just going to move it in and do exactly the same on that line I'll line up the line on my ruler on the line that I just drew and count one two three four just to be sure and draw a line and then what we're going to do is just turn it around and do exactly the same going the other way. So I'm going to line up the edge of my ruler, sorry, the edge of my fabric on the four inch mark on my ruler. Draw a line and then do exactly the same at another four inches. Okay, so now we've done that, what we're going to do is we're going to draw lines on the diagonal. Just on one diagonal, we're only going to go one way, we don't have to go the other way. So what we're actually doing here is we're creating nine half square sets of triangles all in one go. So I'm going to line up my ruler on the corner there of that square, line it up down the bottom, 
and draw a line and I'll do it on the next corner. I like to hold it in the middle here on this corner. Check it's lined up on that corner at the top and then also down at the bottom. Draw my line. Find the next set of corners. And once I'm happy, and then I'll just carry on until I've done all my diagonal lines. So now we've got our guides and what we will be doing is we'll be sewing on either side of the diagonal line with a quarter inch seam allowance, creating all our half square triangles in one go. So now I'm going to take that other piece that's part of this pair and I'm going to make sure the right side is facing me. Then I'm going to place the right side of the fabric that I just drew on on top of it. So we've now got right sides facing each other. can see. I'm just going to make sure all the edges are lined up nicely and then I'm going to pop some pins in to keep it in place and I like to start on the corners first. And I'm going to avoid these diagonal lines because that's where I'm going to sew. So I'm just going to go right in the middle of the diagonal lines. So now I'm going to sew on both sides of every single diagonal line with a quarter inch seam allowance. So I've just got my standard foot on because when you use your quarter inch foot it's got that little hook that will catch on the fabric. What I've done is I've just worked out the best guide for me and made sure my needle is sitting right so I will get quarter of an inch seam allowance so you, that might be something you need to work out on your sewing machine. I'm going to stitch at stitch length 2. I'm using my Aurifil thread and what I'm going to do now is sew down each of the sides of the lines like I said I would. Now I can already see here that I don't want to start right on the edge. I want to start on this line because we are going to have to do a little bit of unpicking when we do sew across some of these corners. But even though we have to do that we are still saving time. So if you can see that we're starting on a line just do that rather than starting at the edge just to save you unpicking one more little bit and I'm just going to make sure my edge of my foot is sitting on the line because that's what I've worked out is my quarter inch seam allowance and I'm not going to worry about a back stitch I'm just going to stitch along And I can see the same things happening here. I've come up to a line and I, if I carry on stitching, I'm just going to have to unpick it. So I'm going to stop there. I'll just trim my threads. And what I'll do is I'm just going to do the next diagonal line. I'm going to come and do that and I'll go all the way across. Then I'll turn it round and then go back the other way. So I am stitching on both sides. So I can see I've got my little line there so I'll start stitching there you can just see my line there so I will stop trim that thread come back up to the top and find that next line this time I am starting right on the edge Okay, so now I've stitched down one side, I'm just going to turn it around and do the same on the second side. Alright, so once you've finished sewing on both sides of the diagonal line, let's just remove all the pins and give it a quick press so it's sitting really nicely. I did give the loose threads a quick trim and now we're just going to press it. So we're going to set the stitches which saves us a step in the next step that we're going to do. And we're just going to give it a quick press so it's sitting really nicely. So 
So now what we're going to do is cut along all the lines that we've drawn. So we'll cut along the four inch markings that we did going along both ways and then we'll cut along the diagonal. Now I find the easiest way to do this is to try and keep it really still and either move yourself or move your mat to cut it rather than shuffling around the pieces just to make this step a really nice quick simple step. So what I'll do is I'll take my ruler and the first thing I'll do is cut along these four inch lines. Now I did change my blade so I know it's nice and sharp and cutting properly. When you're struggling to cut fabric with your rotary cutter, that means it's time to change your blade. Okay, oh, we can see that's a nice clean cut. I'll just pop them back in nicely together. Then I'm just going to turn my mat around and this is when a rotating mat would be really handy. And if they've moved, let's say this one's moved over like that a lot, We'll just straighten it back up and line up that line again. Now I'll take my ruler and line it up on this line. Carefully lifting it up, like if I was to be rough, I could just knock it all out of place. So just really carefully lifting up that ruler and moving it along to the next line. And then once it's on the line, let's cut. And lifting it up carefully again. And you can just move pieces back in if you can see that they've just slightly shifted out of place. Now I'm going to cut along the diagonal. So I'm just going to really carefully do this. And I can see that the edge of my ruler is right on the line that I drew and then your one inch mark, sorry, your quarter inch mark on your ruler should also be sitting on top of your stitches. If you stitched it a quarter of an inch correctly, around about. Just lifting it up carefully, moving it along. So I think the trick for this step is to just really take your time and not to rush and be gentle. So now that was my last piece. Now we should have 18 half square triangles. Now some of them, like I said before, will have some stitches on them that we have to unpick. So what I'll do is I'll make a little pile where they, I don't have to unpick stitches and then I'll make a pile that I do. So these all look good. It'll just be a couple. Now I can see this one does. I don't know if you can see that, but I've just got about four or five stitches across this corner here that I'm going to need to unpick. So I'll make a separate pile for that one. Okay, so it's only four there that I have to unpick. So I'll just show you close up what I mean by that. So I just double checked and there were actually eight pieces that I do need to unpick the stitches on. I'm sorry about that. I really need to get my eyes checked. If I hold this up close, you can just see hopefully there's about six stitches I need to unpick. So I'll just carefully unpick those. And then I'll just grab that thread from the top and from the bottom and then put that in the finished pile now and I'll repeat that until I've unpicked these little top bits on all eight pieces and um, it's a little bit annoying but the time that we've saved by sewing them like this I think it's a little inconvenience that's worth bearing. So I've got my half square triangles here and we're just going to press them now we did set the stitches earlier in our previous step and what I'm going to do is open it up and we want to open it up quite firmly but gently because we don't want to pull it out of shape. We want to always be gentle with our half square triangles and then I'm going to open it up the seam here and I'm going to press it open. 
I'm just going to give it a finger press and then I'll just come along with my iron and press that seam down. And then what I like to do is just turn it over and check that it's sitting really nicely. And if I'm happy with it, I'm just going to give it a press on the top just to make sure it's really going to be sitting nicely for us. And then I'm going to carry on and do that for all my half square triangles. So now we need to square our half square triangles and we need to make them three and a half inches squared, keeping this diagonal line in the center. So I did buy a three and a half inch creative grids ruler because it is easier and I need to make two of these quilts. So all you do is take the diagonal line on the ruler and place it on top of your diagonal seam right here. And then we just cut off the excess around it. We do need to make sure that we haven't come down a bit too much and we're not accidentally going to be cutting it too small so I just make sure I'm placing it right in the center and then I'll cut on all four sides oh it moved a bit so I'm just going to fix it up don't panic if it moves just line everything back up and when you're happy carry on Okay, so that's one done. We've got 18 to do from each pair. Now, if you don't have one of these rulers, don't worry. We can use the regular ruler. All we do is take one of our blocks and with this diagonal line, we find the 45 degree line on our ruler and line that line up on our seam there on our block. And then we're going to make sure that it measures three and a half inches. So we're just going to count one, two, three and a half. I can see it's fitting in there within the three and a half inches. So I'm just making sure that this 45 degree line is on my seam there and just trimming. And then I'll just turn that block around and do exactly the same on the other side. So now I can see that line on my ruler is on the seam and also the edge of my block is sitting at three and a half inches. So then I'll cut. So we're just going to line up that 45 degree line on our ruler again. Checking we're at three and a half and then cutting the second cutting these sides okay so you can see it is a little bit fiddlier but we definitely got there so what we need to do is now square off all 18 of our half square triangles and then we need to make all the other pairs that we need to make that was on my legend. And then we'll move on to the next step. So now I've finished making my half square triangles. I've also cut my A fabric, which was 36 pieces at three and a half inches by three and a half inches squared. So in total, I've got six different pieces here. And now what we're going to do is start making up our blocks. And we're going to use this image here and lay out our pieces exactly how they are here. So if you did use my fabric guide, this will really help you at this point. So I'll just show you how we'll do that. I'm just going to simply start by going across and I've got my A fabric, which is up here. So I'll start, that's in the top corner. Then I've got a B and a C fabric. So that's this one. And then I just need to make sure I've got the diagonal line facing the right way. So it needs to be coming up from the top left hand corner to the bottom right hand corner. And my B fabric is on the bottom here. So I'll place that there. Then I need a C and a D piece, which is this one. And again, I just need to make sure my diagonal is facing the right way. And I just need to check that my D fabric is down the bottom here. So that will go that way. And then again, I've got another A in the corner. 
and you get the idea, I'll just do that for every single row. Okay, so I've finished laying it out now and so what you need to do is just double check it and there's a few things that you can check to make sure you've done it correctly. First of all, we should have squares in all the outer corners. Then in the centre, we should be creating another square here and all these centre fabrics are the same. And also all the outer fabrics on that square are the same, creating that pattern. You should also have a point coming out, well a star coming out from the corner here. And these fabrics will match. The points coming out here, these fabrics match. The points coming out here again, they match. And these points here match as well. And lastly, you can just check that these centre fabrics for this point here is also the same. Because when we sew the pieces together, we'll be adding on another piece, which will then create our square. So these fabrics here are the same, the same, the same, the same. So just double check that. And then once you're happy, we'll sew them together. The first one is the hardest one to do. And once you've got this one right, well, then it's much easier just to copy this every time you make your next block. So now we're going to sew each of the rows together first. So I'm going to sew these two pieces together and these two pieces together to start with. So I'm just going to remember that I'm sewing them together this way. So I'll just lift this up, place it down so it's right sides together. And then I'm just going to line up the edges. Now this part's critical. I'm just going to turn it over because I like to work on the side where I've got my seam. This part is critical in getting them to all sit really nicely. We really need to pay close attention that it's lined up on this side, the top and this side. And I am, even though it's just so little, I am popping a pin in just to keep it in place when I start because somehow it does seem to just shift that little bit and I don't want it shifting. So I am popping a pin in. Now I've got my quarter inch foot on. I'm stitching at stitch length two. I'm using my Aurifil thread and I'm not worrying about doing a back stitch. And if your sewing machine tends to have those bird's nests, just hold on to your thread as you start. And that will help with that. Just remove my pin as I got to it. I'm just gonna stitch off the edge and then I'm gonna take my second set fold them right sides together again, lift it up, line up all those edges, really taking care. I will pop a pin in again and stitching, not worrying about a back stitch. Now my seam here is getting caught under my foot and it wants to push it towards me and I don't want that to happen. I want it to sit how I've pressed it. So I'm just going to stop, make sure my needle's down, lift my foot up and just make sure that seam is sitting underneath my foot so it will stitch nicely and then carrying on. Not worrying about a back stitch, trimming the threads. I just like to trim as I go. And then what I'm going to do is open it up and sew these two pieces together. Now, I want to make sure I'm sewing them in the right order. So I'm just going to pop them back here and just double check that I've still got my pattern. And it's all out of order. I want these squares on the outside. There we go. That's my pattern again. So now I'm just going to place these two pieces right sides together. Again, being really careful that they're all lined up. And once I'm happy that they're all lined up, I'll pop a pin in so that I know it's going to stay in place. And then what I can do is just open up this and check that these two seams look like they're lined up and going to create a nice straight line. If they're not, I'll take the pin out and try again, but that looked pretty good to me. So now I'll sew. Okay, so that's our first column done. Uh, sorry, 
that's our first row done. I'm just going to pop it back in the correct position. Oh, it was in the correct position. And now I'm going to do this row and then so on until I've done all the rows, just like I did that one. Okay, now one thing I did forget to mention was what you could do is also open it up and check your points. Now, that's actually just ever so slightly off. So at this stage, you might actually want to unpick it and start again, or you might decide I can live with it. So if you can live with it, leave it. If you can't live with it, then unpick it and try again. That one there is perfect, so I'm not going to worry. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm just going to check I'm sewing them together correctly, like that, checking my pattern, and then carrying on. So I'll do that for all the rows now. on those four rows together we will give them a quick press so now for the four rows I'm just going to quickly set those stitches so they sit nice and flat and then we're going to press the seams open oh and now I've just pushed that seam over when it was lying flat so I'll just fix that up we want all those seams sitting really nicely underneath there we go I'm just giving that a little pull just gently to make sure it's all laying flat okay and then I'm going to just turn it over make sure they're all sitting correctly and give it a press from the top and then I'll just give the whole piece a once over and now that's all pressed nicely, I'll carry on and do the same for the other three rows. So now let's sew our rows together. I'm going to take this bottom one, fold it on top so the right sides are together and sew along this seam. So I'm going to find the middle point and find the seams there. Make sure these top edges are all lined up nicely. And then I'm going to open it up and make sure that those two seams on either piece are creating a nice straight line. And when I'm happy that they are and that these top edges are also lined up, I'm just going to pop a pin in and I'm just going to go from this side across to that side to hold it in place. If you'd like, you could use a pin on either side. Then I'm going to find the seam on either side and do exactly the same. I'm going to make sure these edges are all nicely lined up. Oh, it's a bit fiddly. And then we're going to make sure that these two lines are also lined up nicely. And then when I'm happy, I'll pop another pin in. And I'm also making sure the seams are sitting nicely when I pin them because that's how I want to sew them. So they're sitting nice and flat. And then I'll find the other seam on the other side and do exactly the same thing. Then I'll find the ends, line up the edges at the top and at the side. Just to pop a pin in to keep it together. And then I'll do the same at the other end. Okay, and now I'm just going to sew along that whole seam, just like I did when I was sewing the pieces together. we can open it up and check we're happy with our center point and mine's a little bit off so like I said I've got a choice now do I unpick it and do it again or do I just live with it and I'm just going to live with it this time so then I'll just pop it down make sure I'm creating that perfect pattern again taking my next piece folding it down on top 
and doing exactly the same thing and I'll do that for the remaining two rows. So now I've sewn the rows together, I'm just going to press the seams open. So what we need to do is just, I just like to give it a little tug to make sure there's no creases underneath. Finger press it open and press it. I am going to use a little bit of spray starch and I'm going to be using this one. I'm giving it a go. It's Mary Allen's Best Press and Erica Arndt did recommend it. I don't usually use starch, but because these seams are being quite stubborn, I do want them to lay nice and flat. So I'm just going to come along and press them. And you've just got to be super careful that as you're doing that, you're not pressing these ones down and so they will not open anymore. So the best way to make sure that they're not is to just come up and down on it rather than ironing. So that looks good. Coming along to this next one. And nearly, oh, that's hot. There we go, that's looking good. And then the last seam, just giving that a gentle tug. You can see I've got one folded over here, so I'm just going to come back and fix it up. It's going to be a bit stubborn, so I'm just going to give it a light spray. And then what I'll do is just, on the right side, just give that a nice press. So once we've got all our nine blocks finished, we need to square them up and cut them all down to the smallest size. So if mine was measuring 12 inches and a quarter, well, I'd need to cut them all down to that size. But I do need to keep the center in the center and these seams here in the correct position because we want to be able to marry them up when we're sewing all the pieces together. For example, you couldn't just cut a quarter inch off one side because that would throw off all these seams. So what you would need to do is cut off one eighth of an inch on all four sides. Does that make sense? So basically work from the center out on squaring them up all to the correct size and then we'll sew them together. So they should be 12 and a half inches squared, but they may be a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller depending on a few different things like how you cut your fabric and how you sewed your quarter inch seam. So now we're going to sew our blocks together and it's really easy. It's just like when we made up our blocks here. What we're going to do is we're going to sew three blocks together in a row and then we're going to sew three rows and then we'll sew the three rows together. So I'm going to start off with these two blocks. The only thing we have to remember is that we are creating our pattern here when we join our blocks together. So if I just turn this around, you can see that now I'm not creating the square with the same fabric, so that's incorrect. I'll just turn it back around. That is correct when you can see you're getting your square here with the same fabric. So once you're happy, just double check that every time you sew a new block together. I'm gonna fold them right sides together I'm going to find the center seam, line them up, line up these edges, open it up again and check that I'm getting a nice straight line and when I'm happy, I'm just going to pop a pin in, find the next seam, just like what we did when we did the blocks. And then I'll just come to the end pop a pin in on the end and at the beginning and then I'll just sew with my quarter inch seam allowance not worrying about a back stitch so I'll just trim those threads then what I'll do is I'll sew on my third piece, making sure again I'm creating that square 
and then I'm going to press these seams open. I'll make three rows and then I'm going to sew those three rows together. Once I'd finished sewing my nine squares together, I pressed open all my seams and gave the whole quilt top a good press. So now I've finished sewing my nine blocks together. You can really see now the pattern has come to life. We've got our original block, which is here. Oh, it's hard to see. But then we've got our secondary pattern happening. We've got our squares here, bigger squares, and then we've got these center squares here. So we've got squares going all the way along now, which is really neat. And you'll notice the way that I place my fabric, I made sure that when these squares were created, when we sewed them together, they were actually light fabrics. And the fabric that I used for my points of my, of my stars were actually the darker fabrics so that helped create that effect. I just wanted to mention that because I hadn't mentioned it earlier. Now what we need to do is just square off our quilt. And that just means we wanna make all the edges nice and straight. So just check them all. And I do have a video on this if you'd like to check it. I'll put the link in the description below. And then we're going to add our borders. So I've cut them at three and a half inches wide. And I'm gonna take two pieces. And these are the width of the fabric. So they are the entire width of the fabric and I've cut four three and a half inch strips for this quilt because my fabric was 44 inches wide. So that means it will work. Now, if your fabric is slightly smaller, you will have to actually join your fabric to get it long enough to do the sides. And my recommendation is a diagonal join and again, I'll do a link in the description below if you need to do that for your quilt or if you're going to be making my larger quilt, the throw quilt. So now I've got two of my three and a half inch strips here and they're just on top of each other and I'm going to lay them on top of my quilt somewhere around the middle of it. And I'm gonna line them up on a seam because that's about my straightest line that I'll find. And I'm just going to smooth them out across the quilt. I don't want to pull at them and stretch them, but I want to make sure they're nicely smoothed out. And then once I'm happy, I'm just going to cut the excess off both sides. So I'm just going to shimmy it across here. And cut the excess off on this side. So I'm just going to line up my ruler on the edge of my quilt and trim. And then I'm going to do the same on the other side, making sure I don't move it at all. Now, I don't usually do this, but because it's just such a small cut, I'm just going to cut like that and it didn't work. So I'll start try again. There we go. Okay, so now we've got our top and bottom border. All I'm going to do is take one of my pieces, fold it in half so these edges are lined up, and just give it a finger press so we know where the middle is. And then we're going to come to the middle of our quilt, and I know where that is because it's the middle of the center block. And then I'm just going to place that fold on my center there. right side of the fabric facing down and then I'll just bring it out on either side gently and then I'm just going to pop a pin in there on the center making sure these edges are all lined up nicely as well so we start in the center smooth it out and then put a pin in at the end And then the same on the other side. And then we'll just pop in a few extra pins to make sure it's all staying in place. And then when I'm happy, I'm just gonna turn it around and do exactly the same to the other side. So 
So now all I'm going to do is sew along that edge just like we have the rest of our quilt. So as I'm coming up to all these seams, and we do have a lot of seams underneath, I'm just feeling them as I come up to them to make sure that they are sitting in the correct position. And if you wanted to, you could sew it the other way around so you could see them as you're coming up to them. and taking the pins out I didn't need to take them out as I was sewing and then I'm going to do the other side so I've got my border here now I'm just going to set the stitches and then open it up and we're going to press the seams towards the outer edge here I'm just going to give it a finger press so it's sitting really nicely. We don't want any creases in here. And then when I'm happy, I'll press. And I'll do that for both sides. And then what I'll do is I'll repeat that exact same process for the side borders. And then we're done with our quilt top. So there we go. I've attached all my borders and my quilt tops finished. So now I'm just going to carry on and baste it, quilt it and bind it and you can do that however you'd like if you're not sure how to do those steps I'll put links of videos in the description below. For me, for the quilting, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow all the squares and quilt them first and then see how I like it and if I want to add a bit more I'll add a bit more later. Now for this pattern you can find all the instructions over on my website and the link is below. You can also purchase my PDF pattern at a very nominal fee and I also give everything you need to know if you'd like to make this quilt larger in a throw size. Basically, you make it exactly the same except the pieces are bigger, so the quilt is just scaled bigger. So thanks so much for joining me. Please let me know in the comments if you've got an idea for another quilt you'd like me to do a tutorial on. I'll see you next week. Thank you for watching my videos. If you're enjoying them, please like, subscribe and leave a comment.